Almost Paradise is an island-centric police procedural available on freebie. The show is about a middle-aged ex-DEA agent, Alex Walker, who moves to the Philippines to experience tranquility and open up a gift shop, only to get freelanced by the local police department on cases involving murder, kidnapping, human trafficking, theft, etc. On this podcast, we discuss the most recent installments of a different series every show. Today, that's Season 2, Episode 1, The Magellan Cross. It's July 25th. Welcome to today's episode. So this wasn't the first time I'd heard of Almost Paradise. In fact, we did it for the podcast, but the audio quality was so terrible that we ended up taking it down a long time ago. That was like right when the pandemic hit, right? Yeah, actually, it was the third show we ever did. May mm -hmm. 13th is when we uploaded uh, the Almost Paradise May thing. May 13th, and, and that was started, in March when everything shut down, right? And we started our podcast with Brassic on May 9th. Yeah, so literally four and if days people afterwards. people really want to hear bad audio quality and also bad podcasting, they can go back to that one episode. We, we kept the Brassic episode up. Well, I actually have five points here, and I want to see if the episode is kind of the same as episode seven that you watched, because you watched a season two premiere. And oh, really... so you went back, listened to the original, and said, this was what my, my opinion was. And, uh, five things <laughs> and you're going to compare said. it. Five yeah. things you said. Yeah. My opinion. <laughs> yes. Understood. So the first thing is you compare the show to Burn Notice and Hawaii Five-O. Castle, Psych, The Mentalist, Alert, Burn Notice. The main character doesn't officially work for the police department, but they're helping out. That type of mm -hmm. show. Yes, absolutely. And then you said that Christian Kane, who played Alex Walker, you felt that he was overacting? Yeah, I, I guess that would be fair. But like they kind of write him into that because he's playing this grouchy, uh, rough around the edges. He has a really hoarse voice, which sometimes feels as if he's doing that on, on purpose. Like it's not part of his necessary, like it's not necessary for his character. He's just, he always looks like he's uh, hung over, <laughs> <laughs> but he's cocky, he's stupid, and he has a penchant for getting out of jams. Okay. And that's basically his, his character as a whole. Yeah. And then Kai and Alex Walker have a will they won't they storyline. They do, but but not really in this episode. The gift shop doesn't matter in this episode, that whole that whole story arc, and also the fact that uh, him and Kai might get together. In fact, he's on like Tinder right now. He's <laughs> he's out there, and that's because apparently his... Uh, so, so he moved to the Philippines not only because he just wanted a, a relaxing life, but also because he had hypertension, mm -hmm. um, high blood pressure, and I assume in the first season he had like a heart attack or something. It's, it's a health concern, right? Yes. And all we ever see him do is like get into stressful situations where he's running around and he's saving people's lives and he's drinking and it just doesn't seem like he's actually combating that at all however in the first episode premiere here um the magellan cross he's at the hospital and his doctor is saying you're good to go we're actually going to stop oh, the, okay <laughs> we're going to stop the disability checks and you better get back on the market because you need to find a life and so that's what he's done and this like little girl is helping him she's like 13 years old and kai are both helping him like swipe right and left on people but he keeps on confusing it and he keeps swiping right on people he dislikes <laughs> and left on people that he does yes so he's matching with a lot of people and he also doesn't know what tiktok is and there's a lot of boomer humor yeah that i was gonna say uh and it really just goes case by week episode by episode police procedural yeah so you really and this this week it was a lot like the season two um arc of uh, outer banks because oh, okay. that whole thing was a treasure hunt that involved finding a gold cross in a church. Now, their gold cross in, cross in um, Outer Banks was huge. It was ginormous. It ended up being like big enough to carry on a boat. But uh, this thing is actually really tiny. And the whole gist of uh, why it's important is because um, Ferdinand Magellan, right? Mm -hmm. that, wait, 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 what? Ferdinand Magellan? Ferdinand Magellan. That's what the na show, the episode's named after, the C Magellan Cross, right? right. Portuguese explorer cir circumnavigated the world back in the 16th century, right? He was murdered by Lapu Lapu. This is something I learned from the show in the Battle of Macton. And this is the Macton Police Department. And Lapu Lapu was actually like a chief um, Filipino hero there. So they actually were against Magellan. They <laughs> wanted Magellan to die. Okay. And if you read up on how Magellan died, he died violently. There was nothing left of his body by the end. But apparently he had this cross. I don't know if the cross is real or if they just made it up for the show, but he had this cross and it's uh, highly sought after. And guess who found it? This random preacher dude. He was like stumbling around with his, uh, with, with his like artifacts, uh -huh. like these artifacts that were in the church. One fell over, broke open. There it is, right? Yes. And, and so he then starts to like inquire about, his name is Father Gabriel, by the way. He starts to inquire about like whether or not it's real. 
And uh, as soon as he starts poking around with that, I guess the information gets out. And then the dark web, there's this like international uh, art dealer who puts a hit out on um, Father Gabriel and wants to get the cross. So let's talk yeah. about that. Because the last thing that you said, I asked you at the very end of that podcast, uh, what would make the episode better? And you said if they stick with the bad guys and give them more credit or more make them more intimidating. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, they didn't do that here. So Peep and Sonny, they're, they're like these two goons. Goons, right they take up the dark webs offer and they mm -hmm. go and they the first scene we see is them burning down the church to cover up the murder of father, father gabriel because they can't find the cross at all they are uh laughably um <laughs> like ludicrous they're they're just kind of really bad bad guys the most typical like dumb goons that you can get yeah i remember um, you saying that also about episode seven yeah and, and then and then the big bad guy though the, the art dealer right who no one exactly knows what he looks like he he pretends to be a preacher to replace father gabriel but mm -hmm. it's so obvious his name's father rodrigo he comes in there less than 10 minutes in and he starts asking questions and the police department's like oh you're the replacement that's great you can attend every single interrogation and interview that we have from now on and the entire episode the father the priest shows up with the police force <laughs> anytime that they're doing any activity for no goddamn good reason. And he's asking all these very like pointed questions about, so where did he say he put the cross? And he and he's the reason why he's part of the investigation is because he said, well, Father Gabriel called me and he wanted me to come check to see if the cross was <laughs> real. And so the police were like, oh, absolutely, we trust you. We're not going to second uh, guess your, your credentials or anything. So when they actually run across a professor who Father Gabriel had talked to and had confirmed that the cross was real, no one thought to question, well, why is Rodrigo here then? If he already knew for <laughs> sure, if Father Gabriel knew for sure that the cross was real, why would he then have like this random uh, other preacher guy show up and, and try to confirm it as well? Are, it you supposed, no sense. are you supposed to know that no, he's the bad no, guy? No, it's supposed okay, to be a so big reveal at the very it end. It's, it's supposed to be a big reveal at the very end. You figure it out 10 minutes through and he turns British and then he runs away with the cross. And then- Oh, he, he actually takes the cross. Yeah. Okay. because there's a big culminating <laughs> battle with um where sunny uh he is able to uh, escape captivity he was one of the two goons mm -hmm. and they have the standoff where it's sunny who's pointing the gun at rodrigo because he feels like he's been betrayed by him and rodrigo is pointing the gun at the police force and then everybody kind of scatters and there's a big bullet fight and people go it man style on it and then uh again, it man style yeah just so dodge. ernesto goes it man like he he knew Father Gabriel, and so they do a lot of flash cuts of him just doing karate and stuff. Uh huh. And there's a lot of dodging bullets in this episode, especially from Alex Walker. He's on a date at one point, and they have a sniper uh, gun, and they also have just regular revolvers that they're like pointing directly at him. And he does like karate moves to dodge the bullets mm -hmm. multiple times. He doesn't even dive out of the way. <laughs> so, he just thinks that like so with his able. old man karate moves, he's going to do it. And, and well, he he's does. able to, right? Yeah, I would imagine. It might be a mix of stormtrooper aim along with the fact that. Yes, he is super powered in a, in a way. But yeah, so by the end of the episode, all the bad guys have been apprehended and they have the cross and then they donate it back to the church. Which oh, they, okay. So the, they were able to get the cross because I was wondering if the cross was going to be like maybe the ongoing storyline throughout the next 10 episodes. Oh, no, no, no. This is, again, police procedural. They're one-offs. The, the thing about the cross was like most of the investigation was split up. Kai and Alex went to go find out the murderers. And so they kept on doing like stings uh, and, uh, and like breaking in entries to like find out more clues. Uh -huh. While Ernesto and Rodrigo were we're off trying to find the actual cross. And so by the end of the episode, Ernesto and Rodrigo go to a basketball court that Father um, Father Gabriel, the one who died, really liked going to. And Ernesto's able to put together that there's this statue there that wasn't there beforehand. And they break into the statue. And I think it's a Mother Mary and uh, and there's the cross. There's a so, statue there that wasn't there before. Yeah, don't don't think about it too much. Um, the bigger, the bigger storyline is Alex because it kind of mixes with his personal life and his dating life because he, at the funeral, sees Father Father Gabriel's funeral, he sees this lady named Anne Villegas, who's part of a very wealthy family, and uh, he immediately likes her. But when she's the one who ends up bidding really highly for the cr cross box, the box that the cross was originally in, mm -hmm. the police want to find out who is bidding highest because they feel like that person will give away that they know about the cross, and she bids the highest. So then they end up doing a mission where it's kind of like um, they go on a fake date but he has an earpiece in his head, but he ends up turning it into a real date because he really likes her. And so she takes him back to her place. And that's when our, our two pals, the goons, um, Sonny and uh, Pepe, instead of waiting for Alex to leave, they pull one of those, like, there's a red dot that just appears on her mm. belly yeah, right. or, or on her um, chest. 
and, and he like pushes her out of the way. Fun fact about sniper stuff. That's not how they actually work. That's only TV and movies. Do you, do you understand I, how ridiculous it would be if, if red dots appeared on people before they got shot, especially with the technology that I, we have? Here, but the cheesiness yes. of the show has definitely been a main point among fans that yeah. they like so much. They like seeing things like that that you might not actually see in real life. Yeah, so I'm going to end up giving this a 5 out of 10, which for me is just meaning average. But I was willing to give this a much lower grade because I was able to figure out the twist and it was it would have been just a slog to sit through. But the corniness of the show actually does amplify it a bit oh, so, so that it pro. balances out. Yes, I mean, enough of the the Tinder jokes and, and just Alex being an old man, but like super cocky. I think at one point he was like, uh, I'm in her league. And she's like, you're out of her league. And he's like, what league do you think I'm in? And she's like, little league. <laughs> yeah, that type of joke. Um, also, there's a line that um, uh, Ernesto says something about like, uh, I love it when the murderers bring the murder weapon to a scene or something like that. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, you got, and also you can kind of tell that there's a lot of heart to this show because like the setting matters. Remember with Outlander when we yes, talked about absolutely, that? absolutely. Yeah. Scotland was super important. The shy Nashville, Portlandia, Hawaii Five O. You can tell that the island represents a lot, but they also like hit you over the head with it because during the date. Anne is literally like questioning um, Alex on why she, why he likes the Philippines. And he's like, well, I love the people, the culture, the island. And all, again, we ever see him do is run around and beat people it up. It seems like <laughs> the main reason they made this show was because they wanted to represent the Philippines, sure. uh, which usually isn't represented that well. Because... And the actors that they get also represent, like, because you can tell that you, you don't recognize anybody. They're locals. Yes. They're locals of the Philippines. It's the first American show to be shot entirely in the Philippines. Philippines. And in that's fact, why it's, want, an, it's an all Filipino cast. Yeah, that's why I don't want to go after Pepe and Sonny so bad or Sonny for being like terrible bad guys, <laughs> but their acting is just very poor. Well, I understand why they're doing it. They do the same thing in Hawaii 50 for for the most part. Like, yeah, you'll get a lot of recognizable faces, mm -hmm. but a lot of locals there are, are actual locals. Well, so. Dean Devlin, during during his honeymoon, like 17 years ago in Hawaii, wanted to make a show that was set in Hawaii. And then after watching local news about capturing a drug dealer, I think that that's the reason why he made the genre the way that it was, mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. because that's kind of what he's used well, to. Well, he's, he's used to using a very small budget too because like i just said no big name actors the credits actually have the stakes in them like um Wait. they gave the professor the one who was able to confirm the magellan cross yeah a name but when it came down to actually putting that name in the credits <laughs> they just said professor his name was professor lewis <laughs> um and then the other one uh the, the cgi of the fake fire it looked like it was from sharknado mm -hmm. like it, no it I... was ridiculous but it was also funny and then the alex walker dodging bullets uh the spice cuts uh, the unprofessionalism of this police department to let the preacher come to every interrogation and also to invite alex almost everywhere they uh, organize a honeypot operation, a sting operation, and also that fake date with um uh, with Alex and Anne. And all of those feel very like like they shouldn't be doing that. Like they need court orders to be able to do them. They break and enter into Anne's uh, pr property, but he, they get away with it. Yeah. The creator really has been an executive producer and writer for The Ark, which if you remember, I gave that like a three out of 10. But The Ark was supposed to turn really good after three episodes. And that had like a full series arc. Get it? Well, <laughs> yeah. But also the leverage. Leverage, I think, is his biggest thing. Oh, really? And then the librarians, and then leverage redemption. So that gives you kind of a good idea of who this is. In fact, Christian Kane, who uh, Alex Walker, is one of the main characters in Leverage. It was even in the central role of the sequel series, Leverage Redemption, which I just talked about. And then after Prime Video resurrected the series back in 2021. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems, though, I, that like it's impossible for me not to be like, glad that this show was bought back. Because when you think about shows that haven't bought back, for example, that have been off, uh, off like TV for years, you have Curb Your Enthusiasm, The Expanse, Futurama, which is coming back like in the next two or three days. Brooklyn Nine Nine. I think it's already back. Yeah. Yeah, and then Lucifer, and and all of these different things. You wouldn't think that. But those all require paradise. bigger budgets, and they also require more actors' times. But like, that's the, that's the thing that I find cool. You wouldn't think that almost Paradise would fit in that like thing at all. If I told you that this, it's it's just a better version of what was that space show, the Pandora, right? Where yeah. they're able to just produce seasons after seasons of, of stuff. But I, I I agree with you for the most part. Um, this isn't a terrible show. It's actually just like a a knockoff version. If for any reason you 
you were out of Hawaii Five O episodes to watch, you just <laughs> jump on over to this, and it, it really would feel the same. Well, originally it was on WGN America, and then WGN America, and I think that that's where Episode Seven aired as well, ended up turning into a news organization. So they canceled all original programming, and then I think IMDb TV picked it up and just kind of aired the first season just to see if it would get a fan base. Yeah, and then it was able to get enough fan base that Amazon Freebie picked it up for season two. The weird thing about the episode I watched in season one was I remember it being boring because it centered around again the uncle showing up and then them like going to a golf game and it felt like there was no activity happening until the very last scene where I think someone disarmed someone with a knife and it just seemed like low-key in that way but then when I saw the previous lead of this it, it was showing kidnappings and he was like jumping through fires and it was just like I, they must have amped up the show throughout that first season a lot more than I remembered by the end of this episode though he does try to get back with Anne because she donates the cross she's like this actually was my family's my my grandfather um put the cross in the box and then hid it in the church just so that it would be there mm -hmm. which doesn't really make sense but at the same time now at the end she donates it back to them but they take care of the security and then he's uh alex pitches his shot to her and he's like hey remember that amazing night we had and she's like the one where i almost died <laughs> yeah that was traumatic goodbye and so we think she's gone forever but then they show you like a little recap or a snapshot of what the rest of the season's going to bring and she's going to be back mm -hmm. eventually she's she, she he gets a call and she, she's like hey it's ann also the kai storyline with him and um or with her and alex uh hooking up like that is also addressed i think in the future but i only got that from the snapshot in the future it's going to be 10 episodes for the second season and actually christian kane is pretty busy because he had to shoot leverage and almost paradise main character of each but it's like different episode block numbers so that's the reason why they were able to do season two also i said that dean devlin he uh he wanted to do something in hawaii but after realizing how hard that would be that's why he ended up changing it to the philippines the show has gotten good reviews but it seems like the people that review this are already fans of the first season yeah. it has a 7.5 on imdb with around 5,000 reviews on rotten tomatoes it doesn't even have any tomato meter but there are like some reviews i think tv fanatic gave the overall show four and a half out of five stars but then you have film fugitive they also said almost paradise doesn't rely on intense thriller plots stellar cast or big budget action sequences. it does not but the it show's relies laid back approach is refreshing among crime and, and corniness like that's what it relies on the most mm -hmm. like again with the auction um he couldn't understand alex couldn't understand how pesos worked so he kept on thinking when they were like a hundred thousand pesos and it's like that's four hundred dollars bro <laughs> and he's like oh my god uh and then also uh when he was talking to one of the girls on tinder and um he, i think they had a conversation that go along the lines of like what's your favorite type of foods and uh, and then she blocked him and he's like i don't understand why i just said i like eggplant and then i like refreshing water <laughs> Yeah, it's it is just boomer humor. It seems like yeah. Then yeah. again, Alex Walker or Christian Kane, the person who plays him, I think is pretty old, and you probably have to have a respect. And the girl that he's supposed to be with, the Anne character, is like thirty years old. And, but I looked her up because I was like, is this supposed to be someone famous out of everybody? And but and she has a son who's named after um, uh, Star Wars characters. I think it's like Sky Anakin or something. Jeez, just just a random fact. <laughs> Anyways, we are movie geeks, by the way. There's no big, there's no big publications. That's why I'm using things like Film Fugitive and We Are Movie Geeks gave the season two three out of four stars. So it seems like there's a fan well, she's base a movie for geek it. Too, then. <laughs> yeah. If there's a fan base for it, and it seems like they really enjoy season two as well. The, the weird thing about using the dark web and the fact that the, think about this. So you have this international trade dealer, right? And he's supposed to be like this undercover guy who never shows up anywhere. And he just has, he pays people to do stuff for right. him, right? He decides to go to the Philippines, pose as a father, like a padre for, uh, uh, what weeks <laughs> and, and just like participate <laughs> in an investigation and hope that no one like comes to uh like it just it's, it's ludicrous it's, it's crazy it's very much yeah. i think like cans confidential because it's like john wick where, where, yeah, okay go well ahead. no i was gonna say i guess cans confidential because uh, i think you were talking about how they really wanted to shoot in canes and like here it's it feels like it's kind oh of you're right yeah, yeah yeah yeah. okay yeah absolutely. And, but if you remember like that storyline had ludicrous things like that happening as well 100%. crazy it's not situations. the only show to do this um but i think that's about it yeah thanks for listening we'll see you on the next episode hope you enjoyed this one bye bye, bye.